Okay. Now, I started off by saying that I, as a physician, and others within the healthcare system are guilty of telling people to do things, eat better, eat healthy, act, exercise, without giving them a pathway and educating them about what healthy foods are. And so I'm going to do my part today. I have Dr. Seema Patel here. She's a co-founder of the Institute for Optimal Health, and she's going to talk to you about some healthy foods here. Some of them you may know about, some of them you may not know about, but she's going to describe these to you and how they can reduce your cardiovascular disease risk profile. So thanks guys. I only really have a couple minutes, so I'm going to make this kind of short, really brief. One of the most important things that we don't talk about is the amount of sugar we take in. The average American, if you have a hemoglobin A1C of 5.6 or 5.4, you're taking in 40 teaspoons of sugar. If it's higher than that, you're taking in more. Your goal is to get down to six teaspoons. Sugar is in everything. So we're going to go through the good, the bad. Well, we're going to start with the bad, the not so good, and then the good. Okay? So everybody recognize the bad. Special K, Honey Nut Cheerios, just about every cereal on that cereal aisle is bad for you. Except for All Brand and Fiber One. And it's the little twiggy ones that nobody likes, okay? Because it gets converted to sugar. A bowl of Cheerios gets converted right into six teaspoons of sugar. And then you add a banana, because, oh, I'm trying to be healthy. You add three more teaspoons of sugar. And then you have your orange juice, four more teaspoons. And that's a healthy breakfast. If you've got diabetes, if you're trying to lose weight, you are never going to lose weight. You've got to get the sugar out. So the other couple of things, let me just, instant oatmeal, bad. Get the rolled oats or the steel cut oats. Don't do anything instant. It gets converted to sugar almost immediately. This is something based on something called the glycemic index. How quickly? What you eat gets turned to sugar. The faster it gets turned to sugar, the worse the food is. The food industry will never put this information on the food label. They will lose money. So generally, most things in sort of the middle section of the grocery store is bad for you. Okay? But let me go a couple fruits and vegetables. All fruits are fine except for tropical fruits. Pineapples, mangoes, papayas, and melons, watermelon, camel, pine If you're just doing a little bit, it's okay. But the average American, they're doing this much watermelon at a time. That's too much. Or more. <laughs> All vegetables are fine except for these two, potatoes and corn. And anything made out of potatoes and corn. Corn bread, popcorn, potato chips, potato bread, you name it, it's all bad. Okay? And if I take these two away from most of my patients, they're like, oh, I don't eat any vegetables. Open your mind. Eat other vegetables. These are some of the worst vegetables we have created. You could do sweet potatoes. I mean, yams. Very healthy. Most people like yam fries. Kids can't tell the difference. Um, peanut butter. Everybody's like, I've got to get my protein. This is sugar. You want to do all natural butters. So you can do all natural peanut butter, all natural almond butter, all natural cashew butter. There's all kinds of stuff. This stuff tastes good. You take the sugar out of it, it's not so good. <laughs> I used to eat a lot of peanut butter until I tried the all natural stuff. I'm like, ugh. That's why I switched over to almond butter. Bread. Another big misconception. Just because it says wheat does not mean it's healthy. We have to look to see if it says cracked wheat flour. Because this is Arnold's. This is one of the most favorite wheat brand that almost everybody gets. This is three teaspoons of sugar. Then you add a little jam on it. About two more teaspoons. So you got if you have bread that really doesn't have sugar, most of you guys just won't like it. So if you're going to make it at home, you want to use a cracked flour. This flour looks dirty. If it's pure, it looks really nice and clean, that's not a good flour because we've taken all the fiber out of it and now there's nothing really left in it except for sugar. All right, so obviously white sugar, bad. But what are our options? So not so good, but the occasional ones, 
you know, you've got maple syrup is still better. Honey is still better. Okay, so if you're gonna bake stuff at home, honey is a wonderful option. It's basically half the amount of sugar. But a better, the best options are natural sugars. These are natural sweeteners that have existed forever. Um, agave nectar. This is something that comes from Mexico. It's from the agave plant. Very, very healthy. Every health food store will have it. The other one is stevia. Coca-Cola and Pepsi have their versions. Found at almost every supermarket. It's called Truvea or uh, Purevea. Much healthier. So the glycemic index on these are much lower than white sugar. So you want to try to get to a natural sweetener rather than something man-made. I mean, if you notice, Splenda's not up here. Man-made. Anything man-made typically is not so healthy. Because once we muck around with it, we've got to take the value out of it. Um, let me quickly do oils. Just about every oil out there is not good for you, except for extra virgin olive oil. Really good olive oil. If you taste it, it's going to be peppery. You'll be like, you cough. Most people don't know that. If you really go to an olive oil tasting thing, you taste a whole bunch of olive oils, and it'll be really peppery. So always look for extra virgin. If you're going to cook, you're going to fry something, do canola oil. Because olive oil is not really good for fried foods. So canola oil is still a relatively good oil. Um, the other oils, those are what we call omega-9s. Omega-9s are also nuts, any kinds of nuts. If you can tolerate them, if you don't have any allergies or no stomach problems with them, fantastic source of nuts. If you're trying to lose weight, no more than a handful. And none of the sugar-coated stuff. You want it raw, unsalted, or roasted. The other really great vegetable, and I always encourage my women to do it, avocados. They have good fats and protein. So you really want to try to have <coughs> avocados if you like them. Yeah, you could do guacamole with it. It's okay, as long as you're not putting sugar in it. Because some people, some recipes actually add sugar in it. So that's not something you want to do. The other thing you want to do is try to go to more plant-based foods. Less meat. I always tell my patients, try it just once a week. Go meatless. It's only one day away from meat. But we know from epidemiological studies done throughout the world, people who eat less meat are healthier. They don't have as much fat. They have less risk for almost every disease out there. So try one day not to eat carbs. And that's a hard thing about being a vegetarian. I'm talking about a vegetarian who's actually eating vegetables. Because there's a lot of carbitarians out there. They eat processed food all day long. So you know, start off eating good vegetables, but at nighttime have something based out of beans. So what are your plant-based proteins that you can substitute meat with? Beans, any kind of beans. Black beans, tender beans, navy beans beans, white beans, cannelli beans, lentils. You can also do tofu um, or tempeh. This is tempeh. Most people know what tofu is. It's a little bit squishy. Tempeh is a little bit harder. It's a soy-based protein, but it's a little bit harder and it can be flavored a little bit easier. My, I like tempeh better than tofu. I don't like squishy things. I like crunchier things. So, um, Let's see, what other? And then avocados and nuts are going to be your plant-based proteins. Fish. Chicken and turkey are your next sources of meat. You're gonna to have to make a choice when you're going to go grocery shopping, like, what kind of protein should I be getting? Then it's fish, chicken, and poultry, I mean turkey. White meat better than black, uh, dark meat. Then if you're like, oh, I don't know what's something different, what I would say, then it's gonna be the wild game, the veal, the lamb, are still gonna be better choices. Wild game is bison, venison, still much better. Then your seafood, the rest of the seafood, kind of on the same par. Then beef, and then pork. Okay? So when you're making choices of your meats, really think about how that satisfies. The more red, I mean pork and beef you have, the worse heart disease you have. That's the bottom line. You watch people decrease their meat intake. We see that drop in cholesterol. We see that drop in weight. See that drop in blood pressure. So pretty amazing thing. A couple other great uh, good things I want to point out to you. you may not have heard of. One of the big things is increasing our natural ways of getting omega-3. Everyone has heard that we should all be doing fish oil. But there's other ways you can get fish oil, because if you don't like fish, there's a lot of fish oil you gotta take as a, in tablet form. But there's natural ways. There's plant-based or seafood-based. So if you eat fish, you're good. 
Seaweed is another great source, but the average American doesn't eat seaweed either. But there's a new seed. It's called chia seed, C-H-I-A. It's a seed that comes from the deserts of Mexico. And this is like one tablespoon. It has over 1,500 milligrams of fish oil. I mean, omega-3, plant-based. You can just add it right onto your, your cereal, your oatmeal, way healthier. Um, you can also use flax seeds or flaxseed oil. So you can, instead of using you know, oil and vinegar, add this to your salad. Because the more fish oil you get in your food, the decreased risk of heart disease, the decreased risk of strokes, the decreased risk of cancer. I mean, overall, your skin looks better. It's a win-win. And one of the last things that Dr. Cooksey talked about was salt. It's part of the big thing. We as Americans are like ODing on salt. We have too much salt in everything. So what I always tell people, we don't want to cook with salt. And I don't like iodized salt. That's a, the normal thing everybody else uses. So I always try, try something different. Everyone's tried sea salt, but I want you to go a little further. Real salt or Himalayan salt. So what's the difference with this? This stuff is so unprocessed that it actually has other minerals that your body actually needs. Zinc, selenium, manganese. Just by using this salt, you will replete all the stuff your body's been taken away with by using all these other chemicals and plastics that we use every day in our food. But regular iodized salt doesn't have that. And the other thing, it's so very high in sodium, whereas this is better with less sodium, but more potassium. All naturally occurring salt has more potassium, which is better for the body than sodium. So try this. This is a great little thing also. If your kids get diarrhea, they're all lethargic afterwards. They need salt. So what I do, I tell my moms all the time, bring, mix a little grape juice, like white grape juice and a little orange juice, put a little bit of this in this. It doesn't taste great, but it's amazing what it does for repleting their salt intake. Just a little bit is all you need. Um, I know we're running out of time here. Yeah.